Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Um, nice to see everybody once again. Uh, so one of our participants asked me to talk about the difference between pain and suffering. Uh, which is a very good topic um, because we're all familiar with both, both pain and suffering. And um, and it's good to dissect it and get into it of what is the difference. And um, so we're going to get into that and talk about that. Uh, there's room for asking questions and we get more details. The It's actually quite simple because pain basically uh, you know pain And it's something now. And uh, experience that every uh, being, living being, is going to have to go through it because it has something to do with our senses and our nervous system. And there's no way out of it. Uh, so in one way or the other. And there's a lot of people around the planet that they have chronic pain and uh, they have to deal with it. And um, and we're all, and some people are very healthy. They For the moment, I'm talking about physical pain. And uh, okay, so let's say you have a disability or some kind of health issue and uh, it's a long-term health issue and you have to deal with the pain that comes with it, uh, whatever. But suffering is a different story. Suffering is more of a secondary uh, reaction of an event that happens to us. And suffering has everything to do with what is happening right now and what is going on in life is not good enough and life should be different. It, uh, and I know better and uh, because I've been around in this planet long enough that I know much better than existence that uh, existence doesn't know what it's doing. And things uh, should really go my way. And if things don't go my way, uh, something's wrong. So, uh, and life doesn't know what, what it's doing, so I need to correct it. And uh, whether it's emotional or moral or political, whatever that is, whatever is going on in our heads. So uh, suffering basically is a number of different ways we can look at it. The main part of suffering has to do with uh, the fact that we develop an attachment to results. We want things to be in a certain way. And, uh, and if things don't go in our way, then we are very disappointed. And normally, uh, either we're blaming, blaming existence for things are not going our way, or it's bad luck, or we're in a culture these days that likes to point out the finger at other people and other circumstances that it's someone else's fault or it's 
existence fault that things don't go my way. So, and we've talked about this before. A lot of times we're investing into a relationship with somebody and we've been dating someone for, I don't know, for a year or two or whatever. And there's an agenda there. And the agenda is that uh, I'm dating, let's say, a lady. And I'm hoping that uh, when I propose to her to marry me, she's going to say yes. And then, so I'm investing in it and courting her and going back and forth and everything. And then it comes to the point that I'm offering her the ring and asking her to marry me. And she says she's not ready or she doesn't feel like it or she's not comfortable or whatever it is. So her answer is no. So now, uh, normally, I'm going to be very disappointed. And uh, yeah, my my bubble is popped and uh, I'm very sad or angry or whatever it is. So because things did not go the way I wanted them to go, because I was heavily invested into the results same thing which we all have done in our lives is that let's say you're investing into real estate and so or real estate in stock market or the crypto uh, currency and of course when you're investing in it it's with the intention that okay i'm going to put $10,000 into stocks or cryptos. And I'm hoping that in a few years, it's going to double and I make money out of it. And uh, quite often things uh, we've experienced, things don't go that way. And so you may lose half of the money you put into it. And so you invested into something and you're attached to the results. You want the results to go your way. And then they don't. So, and then it results into disappointments and suffering. That's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is the traumas that have happened in our lives. Uh, and we all have gone through different kind of traumas in our lives. Um, I mean, there is no exception. And a lot of the times, whatever we're doing today, uh, our patterns in our relationships or relationship with ourselves uh, is based on things happen in our childhood and the conditioning that we've got from our childhood. So, and as life is progressing and more news is coming out, we're finding out more and more people uh, sharing that they've been abused in their childhood, whether they've been beaten up, they've been raped, uh, Emotionally, they've been really put down by their their parents. Mostly, most of the time, issues are with dads, uh, or parents are alcoholic, or they're negligent, or they abandon the children. Whatever scars are left on us from our childhood experiences with our parents, or or being in school and uh, the kind of things happen uh, when you're in school, especially when you're younger, because you don't have much power against the authorities and there's not much you can do. And they they're abuse you. So especially in school systems, at least back in the day where, where I grew up, uh, most of the children, most of the uh, teachers were psychologically ill, 
sick. So they would abuse the kids one way or the other. And um, or society, you know, depending which what kind of society you're growing up in. And if it's a uh, heavily religious or um, it's an alcoholic or drug substance abusive society or it's a dramatic society it's very much into its past or dramas and uh, like the kind of a society a childhood I had uh, so uh, the kind of the background you're growing up you are going to be conditioned in a certain way and uh, so there's different ways of being conditioned whether Genetically, I mean, you are born with some predisposition, habits, and uh, programming that you are going to be doing certain things or not. Then in the society that you're growing up, with your parents, that what kind of conditioning they're just going to put on you. And also the school you're going to, schooling system. Uh, if you're forced to go to the army afterwards in certain countries, you got to go serve. And there's just, there's, a, there's all kinds of different conditioning that is being put on us. So in this conditioning that's being put on you, it's also forces you to shape in a certain way and have certain kind of expectations. And it the society will, like what is going on today around the world? And especially, I mean, watching all these movies from Hollywood. So there's a form of programming that they're using. So they're programming the children, programming the the public in general of certain kind of acting and behavior and having certain kind of expectations based on these programs that is happening. And uh, they, the system knows what it's doing, that they are brainwashing the kids or preparing them or directing their minds into a certain way or how to deal with general public and or older people uh, or, or you know anyone over age 30 years old of how to program them in a certain way of what to eat, what to buy, how to have their, their um, hair done, their fashion, everything. Everything's programming. And that's what's going on. And it's been going on for a very long time, but now it's a different story because of the internet and social media and television, radio, everything. It's very easy to create these programs and, uh, and program people. And uh, so naturally, there's a theme going on and it seems like it's getting worse is that if you're looking at the statistics, the rates of depression is much higher than ever before. Um, obesity is just, especially like in United States, is getting worse than ever because they're conditioning people into eating or eating junk food or stuff like that and processed food or stuff that is full of chemicals. And that's going to be affecting your gut uh, where there is 90% of the neurotransmitters are there and it's going to affect your immune system because 80% of your immune system is in your, your gut. And so basically, you being influenced constantly 
and through all these different influences, also there's the program of attachment, being really attached to results, especially like in the U.S. or the Western mentality, but the U.S. is, I would say, is leading play, leading country into that of creating this false uh, sense of illusion, of ambition, that you have to be very successful. Uh, it's all about working, working, making money. And uh, basically, you get more disconnected from any kind of connection with your family and your relationships because everything's based on financial success. And so it's a program which, by, for example, I live in Mexico and it's very clear like their family relationships and connections is, is much more important than uh, making a lot of money. Of course, everyone needs to work and make money. That's very, very clear uh, in order to function and be able to do whatever needs needs you have, satisfying your your physical needs. But there's also, uh, in some cultures, that's not the priority. It's not like the most important thing in the world, which it is here in the U.S. The most important thing is to make more money and to have more possessions and objects. And if somehow you fail, which is easy because there's a lot of pressure and you cannot exceed these expectations, naturally there's something's wrong with you. And because you're constantly comparing yourself with other people and that creates a lot of suffering. And so these are more on the surface things are happening, but suffering is basically, where does it happen? Huh? How, if you distinguish, when you separate pain from suffering and you don't mix the two together, then where does the suffering, where is it? And where is it happening? What, what makes you suffer? What is suffering? It's our thoughts, I think. Yes, it, it's happening in your mind, basically. That's where it's happening. That, for example, you shouldn't be in this situation right now in your life, uh, whether you should have more money or you should be with your love of life. You know, why am I like... 40 years old or 50 years old or whatever I am or 60 and I don't have my partner or uh, from social status, I'm not in a better position. And so it's, it's a direct result of what is is not good enough wherever I am in my life right now. This is not sufficient and it's not good enough. I should be in a different place. I should, um, I should have more money. I should have a very satisfying partner in my life. I should be famous. I should be having more homes, more cars, more this, more that, or what, whatever is uh, the story, the narrative which is running into your head. And 
So there is a constant comparison of where I'm at with others or where I think I should be. Now, there is a, di there is a difference between there's nothing wrong with the desire to excel and improving ourselves, self-improvement. There's nothing wrong with that because that is a natural process of human evolution and our intellect. They're wanting to improve ourselves, wanting to learn a new language, a trade, uh, wanting to look better, wanting to have a, a, a stronger body, wanting to whatever that you desire. There's nothing wrong with that. What is the problem is that if you cannot reach it, the attitude is that you're a failure and and you have failed and there's something wrong with you or there is something wrong with the society versus having this attitude of, okay, I am planning and investing, putting my time and energy in improving my life or is reaching certain goals. And sometimes you reach them and you succeed. And sometimes in life you don't because different things happen in life and you won't be able to do it or you lose your desire you lose your juice but if you can develop this attitude inside yourself that if i do get to this and if i accomplish accomplish it fantastic but if i cannot and i don't get there i'm still fine the way i am because it's not going to take away of who I am. I'm not going to be less of myself or more of myself if if I reach certain points in my life where I don't. So that way, then there's no room for suffering because I'm fine with what is. And there is a sense of surrender to what is of life, whatever life is. So then you have eliminated suffering. So we want to make sure that the two are very clear. Pain is something is happening in a moment. It's happening right now or whatever the pain is, whether you have a headache or or something happened, somebody you love, they, they died, uh, something happened, and you're going through pain. But suffering is something that basically you're bringing it from the past and you're bringing it into here and now but it has nothing to do with here and now. It's a complete different story. It's a story. It's a story that is running into your head and with their emotion. And of course you're feeling it, but you are not able to, de to separate the two from each other. So, Quite often, people go through a lifetime of suffering until this is becomes clear that one of them is happening in here and now. The other one is, is a product of our memory and a story that we keep running in our head. Does anyone have any questions? 
Anything comes up for you? So how can we stop this uh, suffering then that we're thinking and thinking and repeating? By by recognizing it. Yes. Yeah, sure. by, by recognizing that there is a narrative going in your head. That this narrative is a past story. And you keep playing you keep playing this story in your head and you're feeding it. So you recognize it. And once you recognize it, not necessarily the mind, it's not like the mind is going to stop, but it's not an unconscious recording happening. You, you see the difference? Yeah, I do. Because quite often we're running this story in our head and we're feeding off of it. So you keep going back into this story. Like, yeah, I I messed up. I screwed up on this relationship. It was this close. And I, I messed it up or an investment or I, I screwed up. I put my money in the wrong place or I trusted someone or whatever. And you keep playing this narrative and you can see it with uh, people around you. You can see it with yourself that, you know, or you go back to your parents or you have some issues with your parents or your brothers, sisters or whatever, and they keep playing the same tape over and over again, especially if you're in a relationship. Yeah, but you did this, but you did, but you said this, but you're this kind of a person. They cannot let go of the past and they can't come back here because nobody's the same person they were 10 years ago or five years ago or even yesterday. Everyone is continuously changing their character and their personality and their bodies and their agendas. And people transform. People can change to somebody else. You cannot just keep projecting that this person is always the same and going back into this story. So... And a lot of people do that continuously. They live a life of doing that. And so they're stuck. In that stuckness, they're pointing finger at someone else, at your mom, dad, your brother, sister, or whatever. So then there is no... Um, possibility of transformation nothing can change because you keep playing this tape recording you know it's like a broken record those of you who remember back in the day when we had records and then sometimes the record would be scratched so the needle was stuck on it and it would keep repeating itself over and over again until you tip it a little bit and you pass that area that is scratched. So it can go to the next tune. Otherwise it just keeps repeating itself. And we do the same thing. So A is to recognize, forget about the others, what they did, what existence has done, the country, the history. Uh, I don't like our mayor. I don't like the way our town or city is being run. I don't like our new prime minister or president or whatever, or the system or 
is always like pointing out finger at something outside of yourself. And very little energy goes into looking at yourself. It's just turning the spotlights inwards and look at, look at myself. That am I stuck in this thing? Am I keep playing this thing? It's poor me. Always these things happen to me. And uh, yeah, cops, police doesn't like me. They always pull me over and they give me a ticket or they search me or whatever it is. And I keep playing this tape in my head. And so a lot of times it keeps repeating itself because that's where my focus is. But not looking at myself of, okay, what is it I'm doing wrong? Or what is it I'm not looking at, I'm not aware of, that it keeps repeating itself? Because naturally existence is trying to communicate because the whole system is based on communication. Everything is connected to everything else. There's nothing unconnected from anything else because it's impossible. It cannot not be connected. So I need to just look at myself. Am I stuck in this story of poor me? So many people are into telling you their stories of they were abused by their parents. My parents used to put me down. My parents used to shut me down. Okay, great. We heard this. How many more times do you want to explain this? And how many more times you want to justify your current behavior based on what happened to you in your childhood? When are you willing to look inside and go beyond this? Or you just want to be stuck to it? And if you look at it, you realize you're feeding off of the story. The story is giving you poor me energy. And you are living off of that. And you're doing it with a lot of other things in your life. So now it's a pattern. So you suffer because you're the one who suffers. If you're stuck in your story, you're the one who's suffering. Your neighbor doesn't care. Your, your friends don't really, or other people, your coworkers, they don't care. You're the one who's stuck. And the only way out is to recognize it. And once you recognize the pattern, the pattern is not unconscious anymore. It doesn't mean that it will stop right away because you became aware of it. It means it's no longer an unconscious pattern. So it's like a fan. You're having a fan running full force and then you go turn off the switch. The fan doesn't stop immediately in that moment. It's going to take five minutes. It slows down, slower and slower. Yeah, it's not getting electricity anymore. So, but it doesn't stop right away. And the same thing with your unconscious pattern, the games you play, the games you play with yourself and the games you play with other people, you become aware of it. And once you become aware of it, then it's not an unconscious program. You may not be able to stop it right away, but you can catch yourself. And then you start to eliminate suffering. You, you will not suffer because you come back here 
into here and now in this moment. And if you dive into this moment, it's very simple. Check it out. Let's let's look at it. Let's just look into this moment right now. Here. Here I am sitting here. And where is suffering? Just look at it. Here I am. I'm examining myself. Where is where is suffering? Now you may be looking at here, at yourself here and now looking inwards, and there may be pain. And pain, let's say if it's physical pain and my knee hurts or my, I have a headache, and I'm just gonna be taking whatever I have to do, take pills, Do whatever you have to do to alleviate the pain. But let's say it's heart pain. So someone close to me, uh, I lost them or something happened. All right. Or I lost a lot of money in real estate or in, in something or someone ripped me off and stole money from me. Okay, so you it's painful. How long is this pain going to last? So you sit with the pain and you experience it. But now a month or two has gone by. And then if you keep going back into the story, then you're suffering. Because the initial pain is gone. Now you're you're dealing with you're playing with the story. And yes, it creates reoccurring pain. But now it's happening in your mind. I have a couple of messages here and let me see what I got. Oh. Do you have some good exercises we can do so we can uh, come back into our silence then to stop the mind? Oh, we have a lot of exercises to stop our mind and uh, to go into silence. So, but yeah, the the... One of the best exercises you can do is to follow the stream of your thoughts. You just look at the thoughts and you just follow it, follow the stream. It's like a thin, you know, thread or rope. So you look back, you turn your attention inwards. And you look at your thoughts. Follow them into the source. Where do they come from? Where do these thoughts come from? So the thought comes, I'm not good enough. I'm stupid or I'm ugly or 
I don't get it. Okay, you you hear these thoughts in your mind. Now just follow them. Where do they come from? Just I'm not talking about psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is a different story because it's like opening up a can of worms of wanting to go back to your past and re-experiencing the trauma. At one point in your life, you you need to do that and get it over with. But now it keeps coming back. Okay. So every time the thought comes, you're going to have pain. It's painful. Okay. So you notice the thoughts. Oh, I'm back into this story. Cool. All right. Okay. So you just follow follow the thoughts. It's a story, right? Story is what? It's a series of different thoughts happening in your head. That's what your story is. So follow the story, the thoughts inwards. And see where they come from. And then they just disappear and they have no validity. They don't have any power. It's just a series of thoughts. Same series of thoughts could be, yeah, I would love to go with my sweetheart to Canary Islands. We're walking on the beach, hand in hand, blah, 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 story. Or we're sitting somewhere having a margarita on the beach. That's a, you know, it's a nice story. But that one doesn't cause suffering. You're just imagining a scenario which is pleasant. The other one is you're imagining this story that has happened and now you're adding fuel to it. Fuel to the fire. So you're entertaining the story that it shouldn't have been the way it was. Life doesn't understand. Life doesn't know. And you're you're unfortunate. Life didn't doesn't know what life is doing. So what happened to you is wrong. It should have been a different story. Whether it was wrong or right, it should have happened or not. It did happen. And so what do you want to do? What do you, how do you want to relate with it now? Do you want to relate with it from a higher level of understanding so it doesn't cause any suffering? Or you just want to be doing what you have been doing all your life and causes you more suffering? I mean, it's your life. So I can't tell you what to do. I can only just do my own thing. I can make suggestions to help you recognize it. I mean, quite often, you know, I get I'm I get tired of my own story. If I want to keep repeating the kind of things happen to me after a couple of times, I'm bored. I'm bored of explaining my own story. So in a way, you know, it's better to write a book and not have to go through it and just hand the book to your people that are interested and say, okay, read the book. So I don't have to repeat it. Because it just, like, so what? Why am I telling this story? Do I want other people to feel sorry for me or or what is what's the point of repeating it? 
And quite often it's ego based. Quite often it's like you want someone to feel sorry for you. Um, or whatever, there's something we're trying to get out of it. All right. We're coming close to the end of our academy. Uh, thank you for joining me. Hopefully next week, um, next academy, I'm going to be more energetic and feel better because I still feel this heavy congestion and uh, even my own voice sounds funny to myself so oh we see uh, Arad hello Arad hello how are yeah, you hi welcome welcome where where are you located uh, I'm in Iran, in Tehran, and uh, I'm really glad to be here with you and everyone. May I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, would you please um, uh, taught us uh, some praying or prayers for uh, um, clearing uh, the soul and chakra when uh, we are meditating or uh, uh, where uh, sometimes we are not in a good situation to... Uh, connect with our soul uh, would you please some uh, as zikr or um, some th sentence to um, release or and um, okay I get it um, here's a very very simple one super simple and it almost works immediately. So, uh, and it doesn't require any rituals. Uh, next week, uh, I because I'm running out of time, um, next week I'll, I'll come up with uh, something more, uh, maybe satisfying, or I don't know how to explain it, but for for the moment, this is uh, something that I discovered long, long time ago, and since then, it literally every single time that I use it, within a few seconds, it works. So, what you can do is when you're in a position of need and you're stuck somewhere. Whatever happens, you're in the middle of middle of driving in the desert and your car breaks down and you don't have cell phone reception or uh, there's no one around or you're really stuck in a moment in your life, whatever it, it's going on. Uh, just one second. I lost this connection. Uh, so this is a very simple thing. You you ask for the power of comforter. You just take a moment, come back to yourself, come back to the center of yourself. So you disconnect with the world outside and you just bring your attention here to yourself because the presence the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, uh, Lord God, the Creator, uh, the ultimate consciousness, which is here, is always surrounding you. It's inside you and it's outside you. So you cannot avoid the presence because you are that it's your own self which is god and so when you stop and you bring your attention back into the truth of who you are which is the oneness even though it doesn't look like it it feels separated it looks like we're individual entities separated from 
existence. Because that's our experience. Our experience is separation. And the world outside, it seems like it's very mean. It appears to be that way. And, and the events that are occurring, they're all confirming the meanness of life in a way, separation. So you stop. And you turn your attention inwards. And you feel the presence here. And the way you feel it is because you're breathing. And your breath is the breath of God. So this is the question. This is what you say. Okay? You're with me, my friend? Okay. You ask for the power of comfort. This one sentence. That's all you do. I'm asking for the power of comforter. Comforting. Comforter. You just ask for that power. You're stuck somewhere. And you just ask that question. I'm asking for the power of comforter. And then see what happens. From within a few seconds to the next 30 minutes or whatever, something shifts. All of a sudden, an opening happens. Something happens in your emotional body. Suddenly comfort comes, silence comes, and your mood changes. Or somebody shows up in the middle of nowhere, and they'll come and help you. It's a very, very powerful sentence. I'm going to repeat it one more time. I'm asking for the power of comforter. Comfort. Comforter. The power of comforter. And since you're one with God and you're not separated, almost immediately help comes. Thank you so much. I really needed that today. You're yeah. Thank you. As always. You're welcome. We we all need every once in a while we all need to hear it. So that's why we get together and we come to this to the academy. It's just this is satsang. This is a uh, satsang in Sanskrit means the association of the monks, the lovers of the truth, the associations of the monks on the path. All the lovers of, of the truth, we come back together in satsang. And the attention is on one-pointedness. The attention is really in, on freedom, to become free. Freedom from suffering. And suffering happens in the mind. It's a condition. And to recognize that. Once you recognize it, all of a sudden, this hardcore heavy illusion of heaviness, it, it disappears. We may come back again, and we come back together into our center, and then it disappears. And we keep doing it until it becomes your very core. Uh, 
quick announcement. I mean, uh, you lovely people who are on the Zoom, you're you're aware of it. So uh, uh, I know I've said this before. Uh, it's pos it's a possibility that uh, this coming tour uh, would be for. I may not do it next season. Uh, I'm making changes in my teachings and everything. So uh, I may just come to Europe once a year uh, or maybe a longer period of time in between. So if you want to connect with me and come and see me and uh, uh, don't postpone it to another time. So uh, let's treat this coming tour as the farewell or for the moment could be the last one. And because um, I'm not sure, I'm having serious thoughts about uh, returning in spring. So, uh, and um, the world is moving online and I'm planning on doing a lot of uh, teachings and courses online. So uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to see you. Uh, so what happened was we moved Frankfurt events to uh, beginning of November because I couldn't fly. I originally was going to fly on Saturday and I couldn't do it. So there was an option, I either completely canceling it or, or flipping it. Uh, I wasn't sure if we could do it or not because... Uh, it's not, uh, the plan is not just based on one person. We have to have location in order to do it. So we somehow it worked out. So we're just going to have two events in Frankfurt. There's going to be the shamanic healing, which is going to be on November 3rd. And the third eye activation, which is going to be on November 4th. I still will be there for a few extra days for seeing private uh private clients but uh basically it and and uh we had to cancel the weekend workshop uh because basically we don't really have a location for it so so that's what's happening uh being hamar i think around 17 or 18th of uh october uh for for almost a week and then from there i'm heading to Warsaw and so we still have space for anybody who wants to uh, join us at one of our events so I look forward to seeing you um, copy of this broadcast is going to be emailed to you those of you who are members of the academy uh, for the moment I'm planning on continuing on this format uh, until it's not feasible anymore so everything's in a moment, which is good for all of us because it will bring us back into this thing of not taking anything for granted, not taking it for the granted that Zarathustra is going to be there every Wednesday or is going to keep coming back or or you're going to be there or could be there, you know, like last last time we had the pandemic and everything stopped so all of a sudden everything changed so don't let's not take anything for granted let's not look at anything that is going to be there all the time everything's temporarily including you and i we're here right now but there's no guarantee we're going to be around tomorrow so let's not postpone anything to any other time and if you want to connect with something, uh, this is the time to do it and go for it. And uh, basically, that's what life is with everything. If you want to call someone and tell them you love them or, or you want to tell them something because you're upset with them, do it now. Don't wait for another time because there is no other time. It's all here. And it's all now. Uh, 
we're gonna uh, update our my website. Apparently, I noticed that something was wrong with the website. We couldn't up. Uh, there was a glitch in in the Word, WordPress. We couldn't update it, so we're mm -hmm. gonna update it today. And uh, basically, it yeah, my website is zaratustra.tv, and if you want to connect with me, you can write me an email to info at zaratustra.tv and my social media pages, it's uh, zaratustra 5 d So you can find a copy uh, of this broadcast on my uh, uh, Instagram. It looks like existence tells me it's time to wrap it up because they're doing some gardening next door and this uh, it's getting loud. The sound is getting louder and louder. I'm sure you can hear it. Uh, sending you lots of love and light. And thank you for joining me. We'll see you next week. God bless.